now I have one friend who has fainted. <laughs> I have a broken spine and we're all celebrating my friend Hannah's birthday in the ER. Hi guys, if you're new to this channel, welcome. You're watching like my most personal video that I've ever made. If you're not, welcome back. You're gonna learn a little bit about me today that you didn't know before. I really know how to start this video because this subject is something that's really personal and really private to me and it was one of the hardest things that I've ever had to go through, but I think that it really might help some of you who are maybe also going through some hard times, just to know that you're not the only one. Well, I do live in New York City, so if you hear any background noise, it's probably cars on the street honking, because they're right there. So a little bit of background context. I was in college at the time, and it was during Christmas break, and I was back home. I was actually at a friend's house for her birthday, and her father was in the Coast Guard. And so he was retiring that year and they had taken this retirement picture where they were all photoshopped jumping out of a helicopter because he flew helicopters, I'm presuming. And she in the picture was diving head first out of the helicopter. So the way that they photoshopped that was that she was hanging with her legs from a tree branch and diving down. I've always been like a really active, I like trying new things kind of person. And so I was like, I wanna get in the tree and I wanna try that, that looks really cool. So I get in this tree and my legs are over the branch and my body is hanging down and I'm ready to get out of the tree. And so I go to pull up with my arm onto the branch and that branch that I pulled on was just a little side twig and it snapped and I fell. And in that moment, my body had a gut reaction of going like this to protect my head and my neck. And so I kind of fell on the upper part of my back. And when I hit the ground, at first I didn't feel anything. I was silent for a minute and then I just screamed probably the most horrific scream I've ever screamed. And um, I couldn't catch my breath. I thought that I had, I thought that I was dying. I thought that something had happened to my breathing capabilities. I, I couldn't remember how to breathe. And I thought that that was the end of my life. And as my life was literally like flashing before my eyes, my body kicked in. And I think that the reason that I couldn't breathe was because my body was going into this shock of what had happened and it was just trying to comprehend what was going on. And so its first priority wasn't to allow me to breathe. It was trying to protect the rest of my body. And it's kind of funny, well, it's actually not funny at all, but my whole life um, I've been told that I'm like a really dramatic person, all going through elementary school and middle school. I've always been a loud person. My parents, my mom, always encouraged me to be really free with who I was, and so nobody ever told me to like be more quiet until I got into school, when everybody was like, Schlinda, you're so loud, like you're so much. And so I really internalized that and that became a part of how I view myself. And so in that moment, I was thinking to myself, I'm being dramatic. I am being such a drama queen and I need to pull my shit together and calm down because this is not a big deal and you don't need to make a bigger deal out of it than it actually is. So as I'm laying on the ground, writhing in pain. I, I think I laid there for probably about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, I should add that two of my friends were also there. Um, they, I don't know how to say this without making them sound like <laughs> the worst friends in the world, but they really weren't trying to be the worst friends in the world. They were, they laughed when I screamed and I, they say, and I feel the exact same way because honestly, I probably would have reacted the same that it was out of shock. Like when you don't know how else to react, you laugh. And so they didn't know that I was being serious, I guess. I don't know, I think it was just like one of those awkward moments where you have no idea how you're supposed to react and so your, your body just laughs. I, I do that in the most awkward situations. So I totally get that. Um, but they kind of didn't know what to do and then one of them uh, ran into the house to get her dad. And so I'm laying there and I'm in like excruciating pain. 
but I thought I just had the wind knocked out of me or I was just going through a shock or something. I was like, don't be dramatic, don't be dramatic. So her dad comes out, her brother comes out, who was also one of my best friends at the time. And they're kind of trying to figure out if I'm okay. And I'm saying like, I'm all right, I'm all right. Like I just had the wind knocked out of me, I'm okay. But I'm laying there just trying to catch my breath. And that's the part that I don't really remember. I think I closed my eyes and I was just, laying and rolling um and then after about 10 minutes when i kind of like calmed down a little bit the adrenaline was definitely still pumping because i told them i could get up and walk into the house so they helped me get up and i am walking by myself i think i had my arms around them around like their shoulders and they helped me walk into the house but i walked myself um and I was like, no, I really need to lay down on the couch. Meanwhile, I'm like covered in leaves and mulch on my back because I fell into leaves and dirt. <laughs> and so I lay down on their couch and I was trying to get comfortable there and like moving around, laying on my back, laying on my front. And I was like, wow, I, I really can't get comfortable. So after about, I'd say 20 minutes of continuously moving around, really stupid thing to do if you've just fallen on your back. Um, I decided maybe maybe we should go to the ER. And that was also kind of a difficult thing for me to choose to do because I grew up as the daughter of a single mother and we didn't always have great health insurance and we didn't always have a lot of money. And so for me, the idea of going to the emergency room is like this giant price tag and it's a giant burden. And so when I thought about going to the emergency room, it took me a while to decide, yeah, maybe we should drive there because I was too scared that the bill was gonna be so big that it was gonna put a burden on my mom. I've got these two prevalent thoughts in my head of this is gonna be a burden on my mom because of the price of the ER and I'm being a drama queen and it's not that big of a deal. Those two thoughts in my head were really fighting each other and that's why it took me so long to be like, yeah, maybe we should go because I knew that I was in a ton of pain, but I thought maybe I just cracked a rib or I just had like the wind knocked out of me again and it wasn't really that big of a deal. So they helped me walk to the car and I get in the back seat of the car. At this point, honestly, we should have definitely called an ambulance when I was still on the ground, but we didn't do that. I get in the car and they drove me to the ER. And the worst part about all of this, I remember, was that we were going over speed bumps. And every time we'd go over a speed bump, the whole car and like the, my whole body would shake and it hurt so bad and i just remember being like gosh maybe we shouldn't be going over speed bumps but there was no other way because there were like a ton of speed bumps in this neighborhood that they lived in that was the worst route that i would have possibly had to go down with all those speed bumps so we get to the er and as soon as i told them that i'd fallen on my back they were like don't move you can't move, don't move. So they get me into a room right away and they decide they're gonna take some x-rays. So my friends are there with me, they're hanging out in the ER with me and one of them, it's their birthday again and she's hanging out in the ER with me. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I've ruined her birthday. I'm the worst, what's going on? And the doctor comes in and the doctor goes, you need to stay completely still. The fact that you've been moving around so much is unacceptable. You've broken two of your vertebrae and they are actually slipping towards your spinal column. Spinal column, spinal cord, your spinal cord. So your spinal column, which protects your spinal cord, is slipping towards it. If it touches, you will be paralyzed. And that's when I realized I was in deep shit. At this point, they put an IV in me and my friend Sam is there with me and she's holding my hand because I am so afraid of needles and I'm squeezing her hand so hard that as they put the IV in me, she faints. <laughs> so now I have one friend who has fainted, I have a broken spine and we're all celebrating my friend Hannah's birthday in the ER. At that point, I decided I should probably call my mom and let her know what's going on because I was home at the time and so she was only 30 minutes away. So I called her on the phone and that's when I started crying, having to tell her, hey, I'm okay, I'm in the emergency room, but I've 
done something really stupid and I'm really hurt and I need you to come. So she was at work and she dropped everything. She literally, as soon as she got the phone call, just ran out of work, drove to come see me. And I don't remember much from then on. I do remember that they told me that I had to go to another hospital for an emergency surgery. So at that point I was on so many drugs. My adrenaline was kind of coming down and I started hazing out a little bit, falling asleep. But when the people came to put me into the ambulance, I still did not quite understand the gravity of the situation. They put me in a neck brace and I was like, oh, this is just precautions. This is so cool. It's like the movies. Mom, you have to take a picture of me. This is never gonna happen again. This is awesome. I'm like, I'm totally fine. I feel great. And this is just a precaution. So don't worry, I can still move around. So I decided that I needed to have a picture taken of me. Meanwhile, the ER guys are like looking at me like I'm an idiot and I totally didn't understand why. At this point, I am being kind of a crazy person, but I was on a ton of morphine, so maybe that's why. I feel like that's a pretty good excuse for being not very cautious anymore. <laughs> so I took a picture of myself in the neck brace. I will insert it here so you can see it. And they put me in the ambulance. I remember in the ambulance feeling really nauseous. They had to give me, like in my IV, an anti-nausea medicine so I wouldn't hurl all over the ambulance. The nausea medicine put me to sleep. So they wheeled me in, they put me in a bed, and I woke up there at that ER. Very in and out of it, but they had to do a CAT scan. And for a CAT scan, you have to lay completely still as they do the scan, like 360. You're in one of those tubes. It's kind of terrifying and very claustrophobic. And you have to be completely still or else it won't work. So they wheel me in. They had to wheel me outside into like a portable room or something. So I remember going outside and it being like freezing cold. And they go to do this CAT scan and they think it messed up two or three times because I couldn't stay completely still in this tiny little metal tube on all these drugs in all this pain and so it took about an hour and a half I'd say for them to finish doing this whole CAT scan and then they let me go and they let me sleep and at that point from there up until after my surgery I don't remember a thing I do remember waking up right before my surgery and kind of being in and out of it and my mom being there and telling me she'd see me afterwards and I made her take a picture of me then as well <laughs> because I'm crazy <laughs> and then I hazed out oh I do remember right after my surgery waking up being in a room all by myself I think there were other post-op people there and then falling right back asleep and then the next thing I remember is being in the hospital room I was then in for nine and a half days recovering so basically what they did was they put eight screws in and two plates so that way they basically like fused my spine in that way so it supports the rest of my spine I do believe the two vertebrae are still there but they're not like very stable or very functional so the metal plates and the screws that are in there are the things that are actually doing the work so i've realized from recording this that this story is way too long to fit into one video so i'm going to turn this into a two-part series if it's already up um it will be linked up here so you can just click on the link here or I'll put the video right here because I have that fancy dancy new end slate feature. Um, I'm also going to put my subscribe button right here or right here. <laughs> You'll see it. It's up. Um, and so you can subscribe if it's that video isn't up yet and you want to get it in your subscription box when it is. Or you can watch some of my other videos which are also up because I make videos not just about breaking my spine. I make videos about my everyday life in New York City and all of that schmazzy stuff. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. I love you. Thank you for being interested in my life. I've never seen my record button turn orange. It knows this clip is too long. I'll see you soon. Bye.